Okay, we're going to do some more practice monohybrid crosses. So you should have a worksheet that says um, eight practice problems on it. And we're going to work through these. And like always, make sure you read the directions. So in this case, we're going to show our symbols, write our parents, make or fill out our Punnett square. And then I'm also going to add, just for practice, we're going to be looking at pheno and genotypic ratio. So let me go ahead and grab a pen color here. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, it says cross between a homozygous dominant red plant. So it looks like we've got a color of plant. We've got red and we have white. So that's our contrasting trait for the color of the plant. So we need to figure out which is dominant and which is recessive. Well, it tells us right here that red is dominant. So it doesn't tell me what letter to use. I will on the homework tell you that. But let's go ahead and use R. So we've got capital R for red, dominant, lowercase r for white. Now let's, that's our symbols. Let's write our parents. So we have a homozygous dominant red. So we're going to have homozygous means the same letter. So we're going to have capital R, capital R, crossed with homozygous recessive white. So that's going to be two lowercase r's. So we're going to fill in our punnett square. And remember I said that I, it was drilled into my brain that the first parent goes on top and the second parent goes on the side, but you'll get the same results if you mix that up. So, one across, one down, make sure you put capital letter first, and we're going to fill all of these in. Okay, now I know I said the directions, it does not have geno and phenotypic ratio, but let's go ahead and figure that out anyway for these. So the phenotype, you look at the first letter, so let me go ahead and grab a different color here. So pheno is first. So I'm going to underline the first letter of each. So that's what it's going to look like. So my symbol for capital R is red. So I've got red. And of the four offspring, all four are going to be red. I have none that will be white. Okay, even though they are carrying the recessive trait white, they will not be white. So my phenotypic ratio is 4 to 0. Okay, so let's go to Geno. That is the genetic makeup, which we need to look at everything in this box. Think of it that way, the genes. So I've got big R, little r, and they're all 4. So in this case, they all are the same, the genotypic ratio just happens to be both pheno and geno are exactly the same. Okay, and remember, like I said before, you know, if you want to practice this, try pausing the video, working through the problem, and then checking your work. Okay, here's our next one. Cross between a heterozygous flower red in color, homozygous recessive white. So I'm going to do red, and I can spell, <laughs> and I'm going to do white, and let's use the letter R again. So red is dominant over white. And our first flower is a heterozygous. Hetero means different letters. So I'm going to have a big R, little r. And homozygous recessive white. You know, if I left off the word homozygous, the only way it can be recessive white or a white flower, it has to be two little r's. That is the only way. If I just put white flower, it means the same thing. So I could have left off homozygous recessive. Okay, again, fill out our Punnett square. You'll get faster at doing this. Okay, so even though the directions didn't say it, let's go ahead and do pheno and geno. Okay, so the phenotypic ratio, we look at the first letter of each. So I've got red, looking at the first letter, my symbol capital R is red, and first letter, lowercase, so is white. So I have two that are red and two that are white. So the phenotypic ratio is two to two. And I can check myself because that equals four and there are four offspring. Okay, the geno, I look at the genetic or gene combination, so, just happens to be the same this time, not always the case, so don't assume. So I've got two and two, so my genotypic ratio is two to two. Again, check myself, that equals four. 
Hopefully these are getting easier, but don't worry. They will become more difficult as we move on. Um, okay, more practice here. Okay, so I've got cross between two heterozygous peas. I've got round is dominant over wrinkled. So round, wrinkled. And let's just use letter R again. Okay. Um, two heterozygous means the same as hybrid. One of each. Fill in our square. Okay. So pick our little r. Pick our little r and two little r's. Okay, so my pheno. I've got round and I've got wrinkled. First letter of each. So in this case, now I have three. So there's one, two, three. And then I have one that's wrinkled. So my phenotypic ratio is three to one. Geno, my genetic combination, here's one possibility. Let me go ahead and write this one over here. I've got big R, little r, and then little r, little r. These are the only three possible combinations you can have for monohybrid crosses. So let's go through and count these. I've got one, big R, big R. I've got two, big R, little r, and one, little r, little r. So the ratio is one, two, one. So you can see, you know, they're not always the same. The pheno is three to one, geno one, two, one, two, one. And you will always get those results when you cross two heterozygous parents. Okay, may need to speed up a little bit because I only have 15 minutes. Okay, cross between two homozygous plant, one dominant, the other recessive. So I've got broad, narrow, talk about leaves here. So let's go ahead and use bees this time. So my parents, I've got homozygous dominant, and I've got recessive, fill in my square. Okay, so I'm just gonna abbreviate P here. So my pheno, first letter of each, I've got broad, they're all broad, none are narrow, so my ratio is 4O. And my geno, I only have one genetic makeup, and so there's four, so my ratio is four to, four to zero. So they are all the same. Okay, so you should be moving on to the second page if it printed on two pages. Okay, now we're going to look at foxes, and you notice I said before in our lecture that you don't always want to assume that the first trait I list is dominant. Here I switched it on you. So here I have red. I give you the letters in this case. So it's a big B. Silver is a lowercase b. And now it's asking me for the genome and phenotypic ratios. Um, so definitely make sure you read that. From crossing a heterozygous red heterozygous, so big B, little b, and silver fox. Now remember I said earlier, the only way you can have silver, they both have to be homozygous recessive. So let's fill in our chart here. Okay, so pheno, I've got red, I've got silver, can't spell again. Okay, so red, first letter, I've got two. Silver, I have two, so my ratio is two to two. Geno, genetic makeup, big B, little b, I've got two. Two little b's, I've got two. So again, my ratio is two to two. Okay, number six. Now this one is a little more complicated. Um, We've got something new here called F1 cross. So we're going, that's going to indicate that you're going to have to make two Punnett squares. So let's get our first one down, okay? So this is my P1 square. Okay, so I've got rose, comb, little thing on top of their head, 
and I've got a single cone. So we've got a big R, little R. And my P1, my parents, is going to be homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. Okay, so if I fill in my parents, you know, actually so I can use that square for the F1, let me go ahead and put a square over here so I can do my... Okay, so we're going to say this is my P1 and we're going to make this one my F1. So we can fit it all onto one. Okay, so here's my parent. My parent is going right over here. So I've got big R, big R, little r, little r. Fill it in. They're all the same. So my pheno, because it just asks for the phenotypic ratio, is 4 to 0. Okay, now it says to cross any two. Well, they're all the same, so it doesn't matter which two you pick. So it's heterozygous for both. You're going to have on your 10 question homework, you're going to do all the possible crosses. So you cross all of them so that you're not repeating even if they're switched around. So be careful of that. So let's go ahead and make the cross here. Fill out our Punnett square. And so the phenotypic ratio, look at the first letter, is going to be 3 to 1. Okay? So remember if you see F1, you got to make the parent cross first, take the offspring, cross it, and do a second Punnett square. So that's always a good indication. Okay, 7, I've got black fur, I've got white fur. Okay, so I'm going to have a pure black pig. Pure means homozygous. So I'm going to, let me get my symbols first here. So pure, and it's going to be crossed with a white one. Remember the only way it can be white is to be homozygous recessive. So even though it seems pretty simple, I'm just throwing out some different terminology here to you. Okay, now, it's asking for something a little different. It wants the fraction of the offspring that are heterozygous. So the fraction, there are four possible offspring, and we don't do any reducing, okay? And so all four are heterozygous, and I leave it like that. Don't make any changes. Okay, our last problem. It's got end, end, end everywhere. Okay, we've got purple, and we have white. Okay, now it doesn't say what letter to use. I try to stick away from P's and C's. Um, it's kind of hard to tell capital. Um, but let's say for flower, let's use F and just make sure that we're very clear on what it is. Okay, so we have a homozygous violet. Well, violet and purple, same thing, just trying to trick you there. So homozygous. And we have a heterozygous violet or purple flower. Okay. So let's, like we've been doing before, let's fill in our square. Okay, so the genotypic ratio, geno, and if you need to write this out like I'm doing, go ahead, but otherwise you just need to give the ratio. So I've got two, they're big F, big F. I've got two, they're little F, little F. So my ratio is 2 to 2. Pheno, I look at the first letter of each. Well, they're all capital F, which means they're all purple. So the phenotypic ratio is 4 to 0. Okay, so hopefully you were able to pause this. You worked the problem ahead of time, and you were on the right track. So if you have any questions, come see me. Um, otherwise, good job, and we'll do some more practice later. Talk to you later.